Well, this morning has certainly been insane. With market news of Bitcoin dropping even more, and with news of USDD possibly becoming unpegged and affecting Tron, the markets are certainly holding a lot of surprise. That is going to be what this video is on. Not one I really planned, but one I think that needs to be discussed because I see a lot of people letting their emotions get the best of them and not actually planning out a proper trading strategy. Too many people are not thinking ahead are looking at the long-term consequences of their trading. I'm going to start this discussion with Bitcoin. BTC USD on the four hour chart, looking at the long-term trend since November of last year, really, when this most recent bear cycle began. Now we reached a few points where we have plateaued and accumulation references have been picked up appropriate to those plateaued regions. But as you can see, for the most part, there has not been really much opportunity for a strategically defensive recipe. In April, we've picked up a couple of positions that looked like they were quite potentially well-rounded. Then, of course, the beginning of May, the market started trending downwards again. And for the long-term ranges, four hours, for example, the market is still trending downwards. It looks like it is about to plateau out to some degree based upon the momentum, but that I think is still a week or so off, looking at the current level of the momentum in general. Realistically, this is a good market opportunity with the right approach. That is absolutely the most critical part of this discussion. Your approach must be spot on, appropriate to your personal situation. For example, using this very same approach, let's look at the one minute time frame. And as you can see, it has two trade cycles in the one minute and its profits are appropriate to those trade cycles. Now this only has roughly a three week back test analysis, but if you go through every single time frame, you see the results are pretty similar. A defensive approach that just does reasonably well. So here we get into the market and we're still at the position. But overall, I expect this position to do well in the long term with minimal amount of accumulation. Now let's take this up to the five minute time frame. Look at the market again. And as you can see, the downtrend still holds. And realistically, the accumulated position that we have is still in effect. But for the five minute market, there are seven completed trade cycles. Now, as I've said before, 
it is important to know that the market time frames aren't magically different from each other. It is still the same amount of information on the asset you are looking at. Smaller time frames are just a more closer look of that information. So if you take the daily time frame as looking across the valley, each time frame below that is one step closer to the picture, giving you more and more information on the basis of what you are looking at. The one minute time frame would be equivalent to standing three feet away from the picture where you can see the tiny details. All of the time frames though talk about the same picture. And in this picture, we see opportunity with proper planning, proper risk assessment, proper risk mitigation, and careful analysis. Most importantly, proper budget management. As I've said repeatedly, accumulation is the ideal situation for markets that tend to trend upward over time naturally. The stock market has a 140 year example of that process where over time it does continually rise, even though there are short term extreme cases like 2008, for example. The crypto market is untested and with 12,000 different assets available, a lot of them are simply not going to survive. So trying to find the best ones for your own personal situation is at best extremely difficult. Jackrabbit is just one approach to finding an asset appropriate to your personal situation, but it is not the only approach. Most importantly, you are the first step. Understanding your risks, understanding your budget, and understanding your own trading personality are really the beginning points of a successful trade. The technical analysis is just a tool to help take emotion out of the way to ensure that you see the market in a better light through science and mathematics. What I've seen over the last week isn't science and mathematics. It's fear and greed. Greedy people plaguing uncertainty of fearful people causing them to make rash and inappropriate decisions that ultimately will lead them to losses. In order to survive this market or any market. You must put your emotions out of the way. You must trade only what you can afford to lose and be willing to lose anything you have invested. It's not an easy process and it's difficult mentally to get to that point. That is why good automated trading systems like jackrabbit work because they take the human emotion out and only use science and mathematics to calculate entries and exits. There are a wide range of possibilities from extremely aggressive that might make 300 purchases a day to extremely defensive that might only make one purchase a month. So there are plenty of opportunities available for any type of trader, depending upon their budget and their risks. With respect to the
current bear market situation. A lot of people say this is the worst that they've seen in a while. I beg to differ. Starting in January of 2018 to roughly April of 2019 was actually a more drastic bearish market than this one. This one so far has been relatively tame as long as you have the proper trading approach. So let's see if we can go find January of 2018. Now for the purposes of those not used to Jackrabbit, the black B's are buy markers, the black S's are sell markers. This is an accumulation approach, so it purchases to accumulate into an average. It deliberately does not take losses. Okay, here we have a bit of a bearish run. From December all the way to January. Actually, no, I got that right. I got that wrong. It'd help if I read the numbers right. August. Let's look at the wrong number. So, August to January. This is a six-month bearish trend. And as you can see, the accumulation cycle is appropriate to that trend. This is not that different than the last six months we have seen from November of last year until roughly a month ago. But let's keep going. Here is another bearish trend. But as you can see, roughly the beginning of May. Looks like around May 9th is the sell signal for this trend. Let's see if we can find the start of this bearish cycle. Quite a long one, as you can see. And it is actually still going. Now this bearish cycle actually started in the beginning. It looks like. December of 2017. So December of 2017 to May of 2019 was this bearish cycle. Pay attention, of course, to the prices on the right-hand side as that provides context to the market. This is perhaps the most aggressive bear market in the history of this chart. But still, over time, as you can see, it eventually reached a reasonable point to sell and began trending upwards. This is why I personally believe accumulation is the better approach. It provides better longevity against unpredictable markets. Also with the right level of risk management and budget, it provides a more stable profit versus risk approach. Now you can get into a situation of being too aggressive. And that's where you need to really think about your risk carefully. Because the very first 
thing I see new traders do is take on more risk than they think. And that really leads to a problem of taking on situations that lead to losses. Whatever you think your risk level is, multiply it by at least four or five. Which means, if you think you can handle 10 coins at once, cut that down and trade only three. That way, the three coins will have more room to handle this kind of a market in the long run. That really is the point and context of technical analysis to focus on longevity of the bigger picture without taking losses. But there is a dark side to accumulation. And I've said this countless times. The asset you are trading in must be reliable. Bitcoin is a reliable asset. Of course, that is speculative to other assets on the market. But it is above the 1 billion market cap. And as you can see from its history, it has proven to have a good rebounding effect. Will it survive an apocalyptic market crash? Nobody knows. But the same answer applies to the stock market and the forex markets. Nobody knows and can predict realistically who and what will survive over time. That is a legitimate and viable problem that you must factor into your risks. Now the second coin that I'm going to talk about and I trade aggressively. In fact, I typically use a grid bot to trade this coin. Let me change charts. And that is Tron. Tron is a coin with a unique pattern. It's often referred to as a garbage coin because it really doesn't achieve much price validity. As you can see from this long-term chart of basically Two, three and a half years, price hasn't done very well. It has been regarded as a almost stable coin. It's one of my favorite coins to trade because its price is relatively low and its functionality relatively high. It's available on a large number of exchanges and acts as a wonderful transfer coin. You can literally transfer $1,000 for 10 cents. Its speed is outstanding compared to other avenues. But it itself is not immune to unusual market conditions. It is capable though of price action just like any other legitimate asset. While it may not necessarily be the most expensive coin out there, in fact it's not, it has proven its resiliency quite often. And that is the important part. It is a coin I like to trade. I don't hold it. I trade it. Grid bot trading for this coin is particularly nice. It's a wonderful way of just taking advantage 
of its natural nature. In fact, let's see if I can quickly get a grid bot module up here. Let's make some modifications and get rid of unnecessary noise. This is what I see when I see Tron. This coin is just a wonderful coin to trade. I don't necessarily see the USDD issue as a problem for Tron. It has a wide range of coins that it uses for a quote currency. So I see that as more of the stability point than just one quote currency. For example, let's limit our search here. Okay, I'm going to have to find this the hard way. All right, it's not going to let me find it this way, so we're just going to go straight out like this. Okay, there we go. It's limited to crypto. As you can see, it has USDT, UST, though I wouldn't trade UST personally, USD, it trades against fiat, in this case here, the South Korean one, it trades against uh, the Great Britain Pound, the Australian Dollar, the Canadian Dollar. So I don't see Tron as being in any danger. It trades against the Euro. It has a wide range of currencies that it functions against. USDD is a different story. I don't know much about it as I don't trade coins that don't have a good history. And I haven't really heard much in terms of that coin to warrant whether or not it is worth trading. What I do know is that this particular coin, or Tron with USD, does well. I don't see its issues. I have traded this coin for two years, and I have seen a lot of crazy markets. Let's go to the four hour chart. And as you can see, looking at the grid over four hours, it's had a lot of craziness. But that's what grid trading is about, capitalizing on these movements. Whether you are using Jackrabbit's Equilibrium or its new procurator for limit-based orders, this asset is really outstanding. Its volatility works well for this approach. Now, the other thing that I must emphasize with Tron and any other cryptocurrency, I don't hold. I look for opportunity to get into the market and get out of the market with that opportunity. Grid trading is a unique process because it is possible, as you can see here, that it is liable to actually accumulates a lot on the way down. So if you use this kind of an approach, you must think about the asset's future. 
Tron has done well for the last three years. I expect it to do well over the course of the next year to two years. Now, of course, that doesn't necessarily mean it will. But if statistical analysis follows through, the probability is very high that it will and that I will continue over time to reap the benefits of a methodical and consistent process on a coin that has simply proven to be reliable. I have used other approaches with Tron and it does very well there too. So in terms of the market questioning the stability of Tron, at this point, I see that as nothing more than more fear and nonsense trying to be stirred up, playing on people's emotions that may not have enough knowledge about the asset to really make informed decisions. No matter what news comes out, the first thing you need to make sure you do, take the time to learn. Read about the asset. Every asset on the market, and it doesn't matter what market we talk about, has its promoters or people that support it, and it has its detractors or people that would love nothing more than to see it ruined. And a lot of the detractors would deliberately spread false information to cause market panic. This is why algorithmic trading is really the key to these kind of assets. They take fear and panic out of the picture. And I'm going to demonstrate that with this particular situation. Here is the most recent time frames. As you can see, it is a pretty steep drop. Let's see if I can bring this into a lower time frame and get a better perspective. Okay, here is a pretty good perspective. And as you can see, it looks like a water slide. And you can see where it actually added positions to my holdings. From my standpoint, that's good. Because I have opportunities with this kind of trading. Now, I trade much more aggressively than just the five-minute time frame. But those aggressiveness apply to my risk and my budget. I believe this coin is going to be around for at least one year. So having this kind of an aggressive approach works well for my own trading. But I understand the risks of this kind of a coin. That it barely meets my minimum requirements. My minimum requirements that I use before investing into any asset is it must be at least one penny in value and it must have at least one billion market cap. Those are just my two starting points. I look at daily trading volume, daily volatility. I look at a wide range of metrics that help me decide the best opportunities for my personal situation. This is the point that you need to be at in your trading. No matter what Twitter says or some financial publication. Read them, but then do your own research. Do you see what they're talking about? Or are they simply trying to cause panic and fear to promote themselves?
the worst form of financial advice is the kind of financial advice that comes from someone who is going to make a profit at your loss. And that is the kind of financial advice you need to be aware of in the market. Mm -hmm. Because it is flooded throughout the market constantly. So the best advice that should always be followed. Do your own research. Look at the assets history. Look at your risks if you do get into this asset. How do you get out of it if things go really bad and you just want to cut your losses? All of these questions are critical to understanding any level of trading. Whether it is a grid bot or a double Bollinger's confirmation with momentum. The actual tools you use to help you figure out your answers really doesn't matter. What matters is do you feel comfortable given the level of risk a particular asset requires for trading. That is all that matters. That is the first point and the last point of any trading you do in your life. It could work out well. It could be the apocalyptic crash that ends the market. No one knows, and anyone who says they do know is only trying to take your money. Because in the end of the day, the only one who can make that kind of decision is strictly you. So moving forward, research everything. If you like this content, let me know. I do plan on posting more analysis of the market and more things that I see that's going on. But having those likes and those subscribes help me really focus on just what is helpful. Leave a comment. Let me know. How do you decide your own financial situations? Who knows? Perhaps your insight will help others not get caught in the traps of fear and greed. Until next time.